Hey guys, Wet Movie One back here again with another DVD Blu-ray update. But before I get to the update, I just wanted to uh, come to you guys with a little uh, experiment and see if I, if we can get everyone that watches this video right now to hit that thumbs up button and drop a comment in the description box and just see what happens because I've been getting a lot of messages lately in my PMs and every once in a while in the comments of my videos are going, "Oh, Brendan, I haven't seen you make a video in a while." Man, that's cool, man. I didn't know you were still around, like on Facebook and different places. And so I don't think people are actually seeing the videos when they're uploaded. You know what I mean? I know there's a handful of people that do, but I just think if you guys hit those thumbs up buttons, people will actually see that I'm still here, you know? So it's just, it's just a little experiment for this video and any other videos for that matter. But if you're watching this video right now, hit that like button drop a comment in the in the comment box and let me know what you guys think about the video so guys let's get on to the update got a big old stack of stuff here to show you my mom's gonna pop in a little bit later for a special appearance review let's get started with them first up from universal is the silent hill revelation i gotta say i like this one a lot more than the original one that came out in the early 2000s this one just is a follow-up story uh, of the little girl that you saw in the first one because her mom you know helped her escape Silent Hill and now she's all grown up but she's like you know changed her name and her father has moved her around from city to city you know ever since she was a little girl trying to keep her away from Silent Hill but she's always she's always having dreams about Silent Hill and always going what is that place how do I know this place but that's pretty much the story of the movie it just kind of continues off after the first one and uh the visuals of this movie are absolutely stunning, um, and some of the creature effects um, in this movie kind of remind me of uh, like the Cenobites, like the weird creatures and uh, weird uh, you know like things coming after you. Kind of remind me of the Cenobites from the you know Clive Barker Hellraiser movies. Um, really, really fun stuff, and it, it's based off a video uh, a video game Silent Hill, and you guys all know that part. But it was just uh, I was you know really going into it not really expecting much but really absolutely loving it ten times more than I did the original one you know what I mean the original Silent Hill was just kind of like I don't know it, something about it didn't work and this one captured everything that I was expecting to see in a Silent Hill movie you know what I mean it was fast paced it was moving really cool visuals um, if you guys get to see this one out there I recommend you guys check this one out a uh, uh, high recommendation uh, from me and on here you only get one special feature a look inside the movie just like a you know behind the scenes thing but um, it all, there's also a 3d version out there um, this one's this one's the blu-ray DVD digital copy ultra you know ultraviolet thing comes with this nice uh, slip cover on here it's just a, a really really fun movie I, I, I really did enjoy it uh, next up right here from Warner Brothers is Argo um, starring Ben Affleck and uh, Brian Cranston Alan Arkin and John Goodman um, this one right here is a, a true a true story that takes place back in like 1979 or 1980, give or take a year. It's pretty much about a hostage crisis that happened back in 1979, where six Americans um, are stuck there and uh, they happen to escape their uh, building and the, uh, they're they're being kind of sort of held hostage in Iran, but the Iranian people can't find them. Yet the American people are trying to figure out how to how to save them. You know, and uh, they decide to go, hmm, how, how are we going to save these people? You know what? Let's make a fake movie. You know what I mean? So they can like, go down there and try to like, you know, scout for different things and try to help them get out of the country. It, it was a really, really well done movie by Ben Affleck. Ben Affleck is a really talented director. I, I really do like his acting stuff too, like Armageddon. And he, I know he's in Jersey Girl, but that movie, that movie is pretty cool to me too. If this doesn't win Best Picture this year, I... I, I, I I'm going to be kind of upset because I really did enjoy this. There's a, a, a buttload of special features back here. You get like a, a documentary about the a real event, interviews with some of the people uh, that, that this thing happened to. Um, you get behind the scenes, you get Ben Affleck talking about the movie. Um, it's, it's, it's just a really, really um, fun story. It's, it's, like it's based on true events and I don't want to lie to you, I didn't know nothing about the events that happened until I watched this movie. Um, so when I was watching it, I didn't know what was going to happen. You know what I mean? I was just like, I'm, I'm not, I'm, I'm, I'm not gonna read it up about it. I'm not gonna, you know, uh, look at the special features and figure out what's gonna, you know, what it's, what it's all about. Just watch the movie going fresh, not knowing anything. And the last half of this movie is all tense, man. I was just like, oh no, you know, like, you know, like, just, you have to watch the movie to see what I'm talking about. But uh, 
It, it's very, very well acted and directed. You can't go wrong with uh, Alan Arkin or John Goodman in a movie. Very, 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 very well done. It, it, it's very, very good. Um, next up right here is uh, Easter Parade, uh, starring Judy Garland and Fred Astaire. Um, it, it's one of those uh, musicals that I always remember of watching at my grandma's house. Of course, it was like on television at the time. I don't think VHS were even around. And this this came out not back in 1948. And uh, it's just one of those ones that like, I, I don't want to lie. I, I didn't remember every single song or anything. It's just pretty much about a guy played by uh, Fred Astaire. Um, at the beginning of the movie, he's going through like a, a breakup with his uh, girlfriend slash uh, dance partner. And she's leaving him. And he's going, well, uh, you know what? I can find anybody. I can pick off any. I can pick anybody off the street that can. I can teach that person to dance better than you, kind of thing. And he and he does that. He goes into a nightclub one night, and he's just there with his friends, and he he just sees a bunch of a bunch of girls dancing, and he's of course Judy Garland is one of them, and he picks her, and then Judy Garland becomes like his dance partner, and uh, that's pretty much the, you know, the story of the movie of them like, you know, him teaching her how to dance and them trying them falling in love with each other. Um, this has 17 classic songs by uh, Ir Irvin Berlin. It, I don't know, man. It just ha it just has that nice charm and uh, Je ne sais quoi. I don't, I'm not sure if I said that right, but the, just the cool coolness factor of the late 40s. You know what I mean? And even uh, Fred Astaire came out of retirement at this time just to do this movie with Judy Garland. You know what I mean? And that's just kind of really cool to know that. Um, there's a handful of special features on here. You got a commentary by Fred Astaire's daughter... And like uh, a couple other people, you get a, a behind-the-scenes look at the movie. Of course, you don't see like a lot of behind-the-scenes footage, but you get like some of the actors that are still around and writers that are still around talking about their movie, the movie, and their experiences with it. And uh, how they, how originally they uh, cast Gene Kelly in the role of uh, instead, instead of Fred Astaire. And I, I, I forgot what they said what happened, but Fred Astaire ended up getting the role anyway. And uh, I don't know, it's just really cool to see Judy Garland. And something that's not Wizard of Oz, you know what I mean? Um, I, I, I always liked Judy Garland, and of course Wizard of Oz is one of the greats. But she, she, both the performances in this are very good. And I, I always love the singing and dancing of Fred Astaire, you know what I mean? He, that, that, brother, that brother can move, you know? Um, next up right here from Millennium, and that is Spiders, the city that is crawling. <laughs> it's a, pretty much a monster movie about spiders attacking New York. If you guys like monster movies, this, this was a good cheese fest. Not a perfect movie by any means. I'm just going to give you a little quick synopsis about the movie. Um, something in space crashes to Earth, crashes into the subway of New York. And uh, there's this one guy in the story that uh, works, for the, you know, works for the subway. And he's like, what, what, whoa, whoa, what, what just happened? Because there's like a big kaboom and there's like all the news people are like saying what's, go what's going on. They think it's like aliens or something. And... Uh, the guy that runs the subway calls his friend that's near the subway where the thing ha where the thing crashed into. Sends his friend down there to find out what's going on, and then his friend's down there and he he gets bitten by like a little spider, and then he you know he he dies. He hits like the third rail and electrocutes himself, and people think he died from electrocution, but it's really from the spider bite. And you know then after his friend died, he goes visits him in the hospital, you know in the in the morgue to find out how he really died, and he finds out that there's these spider eggs. In his, in his stomach and he's like uh oh this is not good and uh, it's just pretty much about New York City and the people trying to get the spiders out you know what I mean little spiders and of course they have the big mama spider crawling around that's pretty much the basis of the movie if you guys are into like cheesy monster movies this is the one for you it kind of sort of has like a asylum movie vibe a little bit but with a little bit more money even though the spider effects are kind of cheesy at moments but it's just one of those things you, you don't you don't care. It's just a, a fun little spider movie, you know. But that's spiders, and you also it comes in 3D and regular Blu-ray on the same disc. You know what I mean? So if you have a 3D TV, it works. And if you even if you don't have a 3D TV and you just have a regular Blu-ray, it'll work also. It's all on the same disc on the same side, and it comes with this uh, cool slipcase with a spider on it. But this was a good cheese fest. I, I enjoyed it. All right, guys. Next up from new video is Citadel on Blu-ray, a new psychological horror film. It's pretty much about a, a newly uh, wed couple that's pregnant with their first child. The lady of their relationship gets brutally uh, hurt and put into a coma at the beginning of this movie. The baby is able to be saved, but she gets put into a coma and they have to pull the plug on her. And then it's, then it's the husband 
uh, taking care of this child and just freaked out about what happened uh, to his wife at the beginning of this movie and be becomes like a agoraphobic and being, you know, uh, afraid to leave his house because he thinks people are after him and thinks these people that hurt his wife at the beginning are to come and get him. Sooner or later he, he finds out that there's these crazy people or things are after his baby. And it's just a really, really creepy movie about just a guy that's just scared to to do anything. You know what I mean? He walks around the street all clenched up and just scared but that anything's gonna happen at any moment. I watched a special feature on this and the director of this, he based it off uh, things that really happened to him. His wife, he didn't have a wife that, get hurt, that got hurt or anything, but he got attacked before, but the people that attacked him didn't steal anything from or did, they, didn't, they didn't steal anything from him and they didn't want anything from him. You know what I mean? And he turned it into a movie and I thought that was just a, a genius idea for this and you know, just to show effects of how so one event can really trigger something in your mind and just make you just like shut down completely. You know what I mean? But it's just, it's, 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 it's really interesting. If you guys love psychological horror films, this one should be right up you guys' alley. Citadel. Really, really fun. Alright guys, next up from Anchor Bay's uh, Paul Thomas Anderson's The Master starring Amy Adams, River Phoenix, and Philip Seymour Hoffman. I'm just going to give you a little quick synopsis about the movie. Um, it's pretty much about a World War II veteran. Um, that's going from job to job, just like, he's kind of like a drifter kind of guy, getting kicked out of his, you know, getting kicked out of places, and just kind of roaming the streets, and he has this unhealthy sexual appetite for women, just like really, like, over-the-top sexual appetite, which is okay at some points, but just sometimes you can go a little bit over-the-top with it, but it's him just roaming around until he bumps against, he bumps, uh, against Philip Seymour Hoffman's character on a boat somewhere, and Philip Seymour Hoffman is a, a leader of this cult, or, this, or the cause, or what, whatever you want to call it, about these people that believe in like hypnosis, and they believe like what they do uh, is going to help cure cancer and help this make you a better person. And you know, that's pretty much the story of the movie about how a World War II veteran uh, that's just over the top and kind of crazy and jittery because he was in the war, and uh, just how, cra how crazy he is and how he... He bumps against these people that they think they can help anybody and everybody and and what he uh, experiences in this cult, you know. And I found this movie to be visually stunning. Paul Thomas Anderson's first movie in like five years or so. Um, great performances by everyone in here, by Philip Seymour Hoffman and uh, River Phoenix. There's a couple of like weird sequences I'm not going to, like, I don't want to talk about on here because it'll ruin something for you about like, let's just say there's some nakedness. Uh, and one one scene where with like uh, you have to watch it, so like some nakedness, and it was kind of like whoa, what's going on here? Like out of nowhere, you know, it's like boop nakedness. I'm like whoa, but it was it, it was a, a enjoyable watch. Uh, really interesting. Like it, you really get involved in the story of, of what's going on. You know, um, I don't want to get any more deep into the story, but I really did find myself uh, being really just into it, you know what I mean? Like not wanting to go to the bathroom, I wanted to finish it, you know what I mean, kind of thing. You get uh, trailers, you get an uh, eight minute short film slash behind the scenes, a documentary on here that's about 58 minutes long. Very enjoyable, packed with features. If you guys are a Paul, a Paul Thomas Anderson fan, you can't go wrong with it, man. You, gotta, you guys just gotta check this one out. Uh, next up right here is Bully, a documentary, but also it says Bully, the PG-13 version. I have never seen anywhere uh, an R-rated version of this movie, and I don't, if this is the only, and I heard from people, this is the only version of the movie there is that's uh, you know available for people to watch. But I don't know why they had to put you know PG-13 version if they're not going to release an R-rated version. But it's a documentary about bullying in school and how um, it drove a couple of kids to kill themselves. You know, just because people would pick on them in school, throw them against lockers. But in this, it follows the story of uh, uh, two people uh, that their kid killed themselves. And then it also follows around uh, other uh, people, kids that get picked on in school now and filming them at school and watching them get picked on and having the kids tell their stories about how they feel when they go to school and how they get messed with. And like one's like a, like a, a, a transgender kind of person that like, it's a, it's a, she's a girl, but she wants to be a boy, and she gets picked on in school. This other one's like a little nerdy kid. They call him Fish Face, and there's just a couple of scenes in this that seem like 
it, when they filmed it, it just felt kind of set up a little bit. You know what I mean? I know what happens in schools getting picked on is real because it, I experienced that. You know, I didn't, I didn't experience hard, you know, it being so bad I wanted to like, you know, hang myself or kill myself for anything. But I, I could totally see where some of the kids will think about doing some crazy stuff like that. You know, and there's just one scene in here with a, one of the kids that actually killed himself's mother goes into the room where they found, where, you know, she found her son hanging in the closet and how they changed the room to be like an office area to try to get the word out about bullying in school. It's, it's, it's a really well done uh, documentary. Just a couple of scenes in it. When you watch it, you might go, oh, that might be kind of set up. You know what I mean? Because why when if someone's filming a kid for a documentary... Uh, why would the kids on the bus or in different places uh, beat that one kid up when they know they're being filmed? Do you know what I mean? It's just like, are the kids really that stupid? But I can kind of see the kids being stupid enough to do that too. But that's Bully, a documentary about bullying in school. Uh, well, it's, it, it's really worth watching if you guys are interested in that. But I, 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 did, I did enjoy this one very much. Just kind of just, just messed up, dude, you know? Hello, I thought I'd just pop in real quick with a quick review. Now, I don't know if you guys already know this or not, but I love British TV. Anything on the BBC, whenever I get a chance, I love to watch it. And we just got a copy here right now of Woodhouse Playhouse. And what that means is, I don't know, some of you I'm sure are familiar with the author P.G. Woodhouse and, and his witty, charming comedies that he, uh, he was, you know, a writer. And these here, or this here particularly, was adapted to TV by a person by the name of David Climey. I really hope I say that right, to give him credit. These are about 20 short vignettes on the stories by P.G. Woodhouse. And the majority of the characters are played by uh, Paul Alderton and Pauline Collins, who are in real life husband and wife and they work really well off each other they're they're funny they're they're semi um the the vignettes are period pieces and they do so with the great costumes and the makeup that they have uh i love british tv things like faulty towers anything that the bbc does and this is just one more thing i think you might like if you like british tv like me okay Back to Brendan. Uh, next up right here from Twilight Time. Um, you can get these ones at ScreenArchives.com. And uh, these next ones right here are two spoof movies um, from the 60s. And that is uh, Our Man Flint and In Like Flint. You know, starring uh, James Coburn. Uh, very, very funny stuff. Like uh, a ripoff of like the, you know, a spoof movie on uh, James Bond. But for the, from the 60s. Very, very funny stuff. And the, the bad people in this one are like, you know, power-hungry women trying to take over the world. Very, very funny one right here. Yeah, guys, these movies are kind of like the Austin Powers of the 60s. You know what I mean? If you guys like Austin Powers, they're, you know, Mike Myers' uh, spoof movies on James Bond and this, this spy movies in general. This is kind of the same thing, but for the 60s. Uh, these ones are all packed with features. Like, they both have, like, audio commentaries. Some of them have screen tests and original original trailers and little like feature a bunch of featurettes and just a lot of cool stuff. You get like the instrumental score to the movie if you just don't want to listen to the movie, you just want to listen to the score of the movies on here. Very very uh, good and very very nice looking on Blu-ray. I was I wasn't expecting the the picture quality to to be like you know blow your mind status, but they actually were. And uh, one of the other movies that um. I, uh, I got from Twilight Time was Bye Bye Birdie, and that was a mind-blowing transfer also. But in like Flynn, if you guys are into like spoof movies from the 60s, like spoofing James Bond, really, really funny stuff. Like, I'm not gonna lie, some jokes fell kind of flat for me because, you know, they're 60s movies and I'm in 2013 now. So, like, you know, don't don't think like every joke's gonna be like, ha ha ha, or anything like that. But really enjoyable. If you guys get a chance, check out ScreenArchives.com. Uh, and another one I got over here from them, too, is Experiment in Terror. This movie came out in 1962. Um, it's, a, it's a thriller movie about a lady that works at a bank, and she, she drives, she's driving home one night at the beginning of this movie. And in her parking garage, you know, a guy comes up, puts his hand around her face, and says, You're gonna listen to me. And he's pretty much robbing the bank, but from her house. You know what I mean? And it's him trying to get the money 
from the bank and trying to like persuade her to do it, don't call the cops and just the whole, you know, stressful thing that goes on and how you have to watch the movie to find out. It's just a guy trying to rob a bank, but going to like the person, a person that works at a bank's house to try to get it done without actually going into the bank. It's just a really fun thriller. There's, there's a couple of uh, scenes in the movie that could have been like edited out. You know, it's like tight, you know, tightened up to make it a, a bit shorter and make it move a little bit faster. It's from the 60s, you know, so it's a little, it, it lags in some some areas of the movie, but it's, it was just so enjoyable. At least like the first half of the movie and then like the last half, it's just like, oh no, you know what I mean? But there's some like parts in the middle that kind of like drag a little bit. It's, it's just really, really fun. Looks very nice on Blu-ray. I don't want to lie, I have never seen it before until now, but if you guys see it out there like rent or buy for a decent price I would re recommend checking it out if you guys are into thrillers slash you know slash like bank robbing bank robbing movie kind of thing you know what I mean bank you know what I'm trying to say <laughs> all right guys next up from the Warner Archive collection is Kid and Play and Class Act you guys all know Kid and Play from the House Party movies in this one uh they play opposites in this movie they're going they're going to the last year of high school uh, one of them is like a gangster kid that's always been getting into trouble ever, ever since he was a young kid, been in and out of jail. And uh, the other one is played uh, is playing like the smart guy that knows everything about everything, you know, like the Carlton from like Fresh Prince of Bel-Air that knows, the preppy kid that knows everything, really smart guy, like the smartest guy in school. And in the first day of school, they go and uh, something happens and their, uh, their papers get switched. You know, their pictures get switched, so the people of the school think that the, the mean kid, you know, the gangster kid is the smart kid and they think the smart kid's the gangster kid and they get them mixed up and the smart kid gets put into like the the class for like the crazy got crazy crazy people and the, the gangster guy gets put into the smart classes. It's a really, really fun Switch movie. If you guys don't know Kid and Play, they're just really a funny duo from like the early, nine, you know, late 80s, early 90s. Um, you get a, a, a quick appearance in there, cameo actually by Polly Shore, which was really cool because I think he just came off in Sino Man when he, when he came to do this uh, little appearance in this. I, I don't know, I always love that one. Uh, the other one up right here from the Warner Archive also is Airborne. Uh, this one is pretty much about a kid that uh, lives in California. He's always like a surfer dude, always going surfing and just a, a California brother, you know? And, uh, and then his family has to move to Cincinnati to where it's all snowy, you know what I mean? He moves to Cincinnati to where it's all snow. He's like, what am I gonna do? I can't surf, dude. You know, he doesn't really talk exactly like that, but he talks like a California surfer guy, kind of. So, uh, he's kind of like, it's like, kind of like a fish out of water story going into a place where he doesn't, he doesn't know anybody. He can't even go to a, he can't even go surfing the thing that he only, that he really loves to do. And he gets into, you know, he, he, of course he falls in love with this one girl. And of course the girl that he really likes is like the town bullies. Uh, girlfriend, and he gets into trouble with them, um, and and all a uh, common, you know, it all comes together at the end of the movie when they there's this big skating like contest kind of thing. I'm not gonna ruin anything, but they're like going down like a big hill. It's really really cool. Um, it has uh, Seth Green in there. You guys all know Seth Green from like Can't Hardly Wait. You get uh, Jack Black in there playing one of the uh, mean kids. Uh, you know, it's like picking on them. Just a, a really really fun movie that I always, I always, always loved uh, back when it was on VHS and all that. Uh, this right here, I believe it comes with like a trailer uh, to the movie on here, but it's just really cool to see Seth Green playing like a really, like, geeky guy, you know what I mean? I know he, he played geeky guy in uh, Can't Hardly Wait, but it was just a tiny bit different than he, you know, than he, than he did in the, this one. And the other one I got right here is Penn and Teller, uh, Get Killed. Um, I've, I've seen this one a long time ago on VHS, and, uh, I just wanted to check it out again. If you, you guys all know Penn & Teller from, like, Penn & Teller's TV show Bullshit and their Las Vegas appearances. Um, and this one, the beginning of it, is, uh, them going on a talk show. They're playing themselves in the movie. They're going on a talk show, and it, during one of their appearances, uh, Penn says, uh, you know, I wish I can get killed. You know, I wish someone would just kill me, like, you know, so it, it could be, like, exciting, something exciting happen. And, uh, and then it's, then it's, then it's him and Teller going on this little tour, going on a tour, going around, and people are trying to kill him, you know, but then on the, on the way they're doing it, they're playing little jokes and schemes on each other, like, um, like Teller plays a joke on, uh, on Penn when they're going through, like, an airport security. 
you know how when you walk through the security, it goes beep, 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 if you have something in your pockets, and Teller keeps, like, throwing this metal ball back and forth, you know, or, you know, back and forth between the metal detectors and keeps dropping things in Penn's pocket. It's just pretty much about a, two guys keeps, it's like two guys messing with each other the whole movie. Until some part of the movie you don't know if the people are being messed with or if it's really happening kind of thing. But you know they're not really dead because they're still alive making TV shows and things now. But it's just a really, really interesting movie. The end of this movie is really kind of hardcore. You know what I mean? Something that you you would probably expect by the title of this movie. But it's just kind of like, whoa, what? You know, kind of like how Kevin Smith ended, the, how Kevin Smith ended Clerks in the original version that he had. You know what I mean? It's kind of like that. But it's really, really enjoyable. Um, I I suggest you check this out if you guys are uh, Penn and Teller fans. I, I I enjoyed this one. Just a little kind of weird, you know, at some points. But it's really enjoyable on the other points with them doing their magic tricks and doing different little things. Uh, next up right here is Fat Kid Rules the World. I know a couple of you guys saw me get it in an Out and About or a Hoarding Up video. And you guys wanted me to talk about it. Um, it's pretty much about this fat kid. Um, he's just had it of going to school. He's just like tired of being picked on and messed with. And like he even, he even dreams about jumping in front of buses to kill himself. You know what I mean? It's like little dream sequences of him jumping in front of a bus to do it. Yet he doesn't really do it. And as he's walking down the street one day, there's one kid, like grungy kind of kid, like, like street kind of person, kind of kid, walks up to him and says, yo, give me some, give me, yo, give me some money, boy. You know, kind of thing. And he kind of gives him money. And then he bumps, he bumps against that kid later on, and you know, down the road. And uh, they kind of strike up this relationship, and um, he, he's kind of like a stay-at-home kid that doesn't really do much with himself. You know, it's pretty much him and this one guy that he meets. They, uh, he's kind of like a street person, yet he's in a band. Yet his band, mem the band that he's in, he's, he gets kicked out of it, and he wants to start a new one. And he, 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 he bumped against this kid earlier, and he's like, you want to be in my band? Like he's try pretty much them trying to start a band together, but the big guy just doing it because he doesn't know what to do first. He's kind of like intimidated about how what's the, what's really going on, and then he kind of gets into it. Um, I found it to be really enjoyable. Um, it's kind of like Angus in a way, but a little like a little twist on it. You know what I mean? A little like a, a, a little twist on it. I really did enjoy uh, Fat Kid Rules the World, and if you're a fat guy, you have to go pick this up, man. Fat power. <laughs> Alright guys, last up for my update from new video is H2O Just Add Water, the complete first season. It's about these three friends that happen to turn into mermaids. You have to watch the show to find out how they turn into mermaids. And they have these, uh, they each have a special power. One of them can freeze things. Uh, one of them can, like, make things really hot. And, uh, it's one of those things, like, if they touch water, after, ten seconds after they touch the water, they turn into mermaids. You know, and it's pretty much them trying to keep their secret and make sure no one in the town finds out that they, they're mermaids. Like, in one episode, one girl's going to a pool party. You know what I mean? And there's this, of course, this asshole kid that's there. Put, you know, you, they think, you think they're going to push her into, like, the, the water. And, you know, what happens if she turns in, you know, she goes into the water, she's going to turn into a mermaid and everyone's going to find out kind of thing. It's just pretty much them trying to keep things a secret. It's a really, really fun show that aired on Nickelodeon. I forgot exactly when. But it's just, it's just really, really fun. Me and my sister were watching a, a handful of episodes and really enjoying ourselves with it. So if you guys get a chance, I would check this one out totally. If you, it, it's kind of, it kind of has the, uh, a, a vibe of like Charmed. You know what I mean? But a little tamer Nickelodeon version. Uh, you know, girls with powers, but then they have to turn to mermaids too. But it, it's, it's really fun. If you guys have watched Charmed, you guys will get a, you guys will get a kick out of the show too. Well, uh, that's pretty much my update for today, guys. Please make sure you guys th uh, thumbs up and like this video. Share it around on Facebook and Twitter. And I'll see you guys all next time. Thank you very much for watching.